Hello, Laura. Here I am again. Uh, it's been a while. Um, a lot has changed, I'm sure, for the both of us. Um, but I had a couple more stories for you. I thought you'd be interested to hear uh, some of the weird experiences that seem to happen to me. Um, oh, and also I wanted to note that since, uh, since this is awkward conversations and it has been a while, I thought I would commemorate the occasion by introducing an idea of my own. And here I am, it's uh, my uh, awkward impersonation of a Wes Anderson movie, I guess. Let's call it that, huh? So yeah, I have this mustache here. Um, yeah, it's hard when you're looking at it through like a webcam, but I did. Uh, anyway, it's it's pretty it's pretty real feeling. It's pretty nice. Um, but the rest of the outfit I just threw together. I figured it was Wes Anderson esque. Uh, so yeah, that's my awkward impersonation. That's yeah. You know, I don't know if this, this outfit really doesn't work much. Um, it doesn't really work that well. The mustache is great, though. I'm thinking about taking it to work tomorrow. Uh, I really am very serious about that. Anyway, uh, interesting stories. Uh, this summer, summer, not really, this spring, I decided to take up softball. And I've had just a ton of very interesting experiences. But this one particular day, um, I invited my friend, or, well, we agreed. She kind of invited herself. But anyway, my friend Leah came to my softball game to watch me play. And that was very exciting, and of course, <clears throat> I'm like the one of the two white people, I guess, on my team. And I, I don't know, that's not a bad thing, I suppose, it's not a great, it's kind of awkward, maybe. I don't really know that many people on the team, but anyway, everybody notices me. I kind of stand out like a sore thumb. <laughs> but anyway, um, this one day... Leah's there watching me, and I, I get my chance at bat, and I only had one at bat since I was coming in off the bench, and uh, I swing at the first pitch, uh, and I send it tumbling very slowly, very weakly, uh, to the pitcher, and I just start out, you know, running to first base, and I, I'm not going to get too intensive, you know, in terms of baseball terminology, I don't assume that everyone knows what I'm talking about, but suffice it to say, I lost my balance as I was exiting the box, and I'll just recreate my running motion for you here but anyway I knew something was wrong I was like it was like the top half of my body was just moving at a different speed than the bottom half anyway um, they field the ball and they throw to first but it kind of ends up being a close play because it's softball and they're all terrible at fielding um, so anyway I felt this feeling of falling forward and I knew that there was nothing I could do to stop it, and I just embraced it. And I just fell, like tumbled, like rolled pretty much. Uh, my hat went one direction, my glasses went another. My face slammed into the dirt. Uh, I rolled over the bag. I was out. But the thing was, apparently it caused such a dust cloud that everyone was running out from the dugout screaming, he's safe, he's safe. And I was just thinking, oh my god, I fell. And now I'm, everyone's going to make fun of me. And I go into the dugout and everyone's like cheering and throwing their arms up and wants to embrace me and all that because of the, you know, headstrong dive I made into first base. And I just decided not to correct them. So I was, I was the hero. Not really the hero because I didn't accomplish anything when I was out. But my heart, my heart was on the line. At least that's what they thought. And who am I to tell them that I don't have as much heart as they think I do? But... Anyway, that night, uh, Lee and I are hanging out, and we decide to go to a vegetarian restaurant, because that's what people do, you know, when we don't eat meat. Uh, we're hanging out at this vegetarian restaurant, and our waiter is really weird. Like, he just keeps coming up and just, like, like he's trying to be friendly. He's actually, he was actually pretty funny and pretty cool. I liked it, but he'd, he'd come up and he'd, he'd go, a couple of shots for you guys? A couple of shots? Two, come more, some more beers? You know, and even though he, like was putting more beers on the table. He'd, he'd come out with the beers and he'd set them down like, can I get you guys another round? Or I think the first thing he said to us was if we wanted shots. And uh, I was like, yeah. But uh, Leah was not as keen. She was more of a beer drinker. Anyway, we 
we were like making friends with our waiter over time. Like we took so long to eat, we ended up relocating the bar. He actually bought us shots. I guess he really was that serious about it. And then he came up to us later and was like, "Do you guys want to buy some weed?" And like this is, I guess, not how most restaurants work. You know, most restaurants don't have weed on the menu. But anyway, my friend Leah, her parents happened to smoke a lot. And she was like, yeah, he'll do it. And she's pointing at me saying, yeah, I want to buy um, marijuana for her friend, for her parents. So then he brings over this incredibly hairy man who's just hair down to his ass. And he's from Colorado and he's so drunk. Like, I've never smelled somebody who just smelled like some, like every kind of alcohol all at once. But he was there sitting there telling us about all these things, about 9-11 conspiracy theories and about how George Bush was like the son of, of Aleister Crowley. Weird stuff like that. And so anyway, he finally ends up like luring me into this back alley because my friend Leah actually didn't, you know, wasn't going to go out there but was happy to volunteer me. And I just thought, hey, adventure. And so we go out there and... It was just terrifying. He actually just gave it to me and said, hey, you'll give me the money later, right? And I just, you know, all right, that's a transaction for you. I just walked away and, uh, yeah, that's, it, it, it's a long story, actually. That night went on for quite a bit, but I won't get too much into it. Um, in my softball adventures, though, I have injured myself quite a bit besides just tumbling. Uh, it's embarrassing, but I... I actually do hope that you've been doing well, Laura. Um, this is my threatened video. I will probably come back with another one with some other awkward idea soon. Um, actually, my my uh, <laughs> my friend recently, Leah, was telling me like whenever her whenever she's telling a story that doesn't make sense or sounds bad or is not going well, or the audience is not receptive to it, she'll just say, "And then I found five dollars," or she'll say based on how horrible the story turns out to be, she'll buy, she'll, it'll be like, oh, I found $20, if it's even worse. But I don't know how, how, uh, how bad this conversation has been, so. I found $100. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed the, uh, the uh, mustache, because it burns right now. I do not know how to put this stuff on. Anyway, have a good one, Laura, and... I look forward to hearing from you.